Welcome back to Sailing Vessel MIG. It's great to have you here with me today as I tell you about our trip across the Gulf of Mexico on Evy May. Well, we left Galveston Harbor early in the morning after anchoring out just outside the intercoastal waterway. We decided not to take the intercoastal even though we knew that there was going to be a big gale that was coming within a couple of days and we decided we could do a offshore hop for about a hundred and something miles down to Calcasieu, Louisiana, which is actually on the border of Louisiana and Texas. And so we headed out early in the morning and it was foggy and there were big ships and all Norman had for a noisemaker was one of those little air horns that went beep, beep. And uh, so since then, I've bought two train horns for MIG. So now when MIG is offshore in fog, it'll sound like honk. Anyway, uh, we got going and we had no sooner got offshore a little ways than the wind stopped. And uh, we... Used the motor for a little while and the generator, and then we decided, well, I guess we'll just sit here and wait for wind because we knew that some wind was supposed to be picking up again and that we should be able to make it into that pass in plenty of time to avoid the gale that was coming. So that's what we did. We sailed until there was no wind, and then we did what real sailors do. Sat around and waited. Well... There's no wind, so our options are to further deplete our fuel supply and our batteries, or sit here and wait for the wind. So I've got the mainsail up, and it's just kind of flopping around, keeping us a little bit steady in these swells. This is a good spot to wait. We're away from all of the offshore platforms, which there are a lot of out here. And uh, it's foggy. So we've got our AIS on and our radio. Um, and we're just going to kind of catch up on a little sleep. And uh, this is what you do when you sail. So we're just going to wait. We're offshore enough. We don't have to worry much about anything. And... Um, there you go. This is what you do. This is the choice you make if you either sail with no engine or you sail with an electric motor, I think. Um, you have to come to these points where you just say, man, we're just going to sit here and wait. It's supposed to blow later on. So we'll wait for it. And we'll just uh, listen to the slatting of the mainsail, which sucks, but it is what it is. There you go. Look at that fog. Just foggy. Foggy, foggy. It'd be nice if some dolphins came or something. But nope. Maybe that sun will get up there and we'll get enough through the clouds that it can put a little boost in our batteries. I don't know. This is what it's like. You just sit here and watch the birds, watch the sails. The boat just floats around, goes where she wants to go. It's no biggie. We've got a few things to do because we're supposed to have a gale anyway. So when the gale comes, we will uh, be ready for it. So I've got a few things on my list of stuff I'd like to do. We still haven't run the jack lines or anything because we were planning on stopping tonight. So that's something I need to do. So... I'm going to stop jabbering away because I think Norm is down there trying to sleep. So He's probably not. He's probably listening to me. If I hear a chuckle down there, I'll know he's listening and not sleeping. I didn't hear anything. All right. We'll keep you updated today and, and we'll keep looking, looking back at you and showing you what's, what's up. You get to be here too. Not sure if you can hear the wind, but we are anchored out right now in uh, 
Calcasio, uh, Bay in Louisiana. We've been here for a day already. Hey, we? Yesterday was your expedition on the dinghy to go and get fuel. That was a blast. Brought, tried out the dinghy for the first time. It's a little one we bought at West Marine, little eight footer. I got my little two and a half horse outboard on there for a little Honda one back there. And I had it open, wide open, all the way over there and all the way back. Took and, him a long time. And it, it almost made it without, I filled the tank up when I left, and it almost made it all the way there and back. But it had to refill about three or 400 yards out. But it went well. It was pretty cool. I could, uh, when I was kneeling in it, I could lean to one side or lean to the other side and it would steer itself as I was going around the, in the water. I'll walk up to the bow and show you the anchor road. It's blowing like 25 right now. Gonna increase gusting to 40 apparently. Got 120 feet of chain out, 25 feet of road. Sun's putting in some juice into the battery. Nice thing is, with the wind blowing, the mosquitoes are down. <laughs> oh my God. We yeah. have mosquito bites all <laughs> over us. They're horrible. <laughs> They're insane. We wake up in the morning, and even the screens with the screens on, there are the, the screens on the inside are covered with hundreds of mosquitoes. And uh, we've been wearing our clothes at night, and it didn't matter. I. I was wearing long sleeve shirt. Apparently, Louisiana kind of known for mosquitoes. That is true. We dialed in a few things today. We uh, we're working on all of his systems that he's installed over the months and years. <laughs> Some of them years. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so his pelagic autopilot. He's got two. He's got the tiller pilot that hooks to the tiller and then he's got the pelagic little uh, little tiller pilot that hooks to the monitor wind vane and steers the boat using the monitor he's named those the big one here is this is the main the one for the tiller up here is Daryl and the one on the uh, on the uh, wind monitor wind vane is Darrell and then his monitor wind vane is people people <laughs> And his dinghy, now remember the boat's name is Evie May, and his dinghy he's named... Mini May. Mini May. <laughs> so, but we've got, we've been dialing in those things while we're sitting here, and I think we've got them pretty well figured out. Woo, that one bent us over. Let's see what the wind was there. Now well, that was gusting probably to, yeah. I was gusting up probably 26 or so. So, we've also figured out his uh, Furuno watch, first watch radar, which is the same one I have on MIG. And we've figured out how to get them to work on the iPad and the phone. And he's got his BNG, and all of that goes through SeaTalk to his chart plotter, which is a pretty nice system. Um, not sure he's gonna leave it on this swinging thing that comes out of the cockpit or if he's gonna install it right here. I bet you he ends up installing it here. It's, it, this is a really nice uh, swing out arm he's got here. I'll give you that. 
I mean, as far as swing at arms go, it's great, but it still gets in your way when you're going in and out of the head and, uh, you know, trying to get up and down at night. If you're offshore, you have to move it out of the way. But this one's much better than the one I had on MIG originally. It used to just swing back and forth offshore and we had bungees trying to hold it. But this one is very secure. You can tighten it down where you want it. So, I mean, if you're going to do it, this is the way to do that, I think. And uh, he may just leave that um, if it doesn't bug him enough. Um, if I had spent all the money on it, I'd probably leave it too. <laughs> That's a big factor. That is true. <laughs> so, we're just in waiting mode, sitting around eating keto candies, and I make one meal a day for us. That's plenty. We've had steak and chicken salad, and we always have salad with our dinner. So, anything else you'd like to add today? No, but we do have a few little dolphins playing around the boat here in this little area. It's kind of cool looking at. Very much else to look at. There's a few shrimp boats around, but... We were kind of hoping the shrimp boats would stop by and throw us some shrimp, but guess not. Yep. He's going to do another little run over here to this little spot right there. It's not very far away tomorrow to get some more water for our trip. So... All right, well, we'll sign off and hopefully have some more exciting stuff when we get going offshore. We're going to try and make it all the way to Florida on this next run. So, talk to you later. So, the weather uh, program I use has been Tusky, by the way. Don't get into it. I don't know which one's best. I use Ventusky. I like it used it for a while so um here's what we got right now it's thursday we are at the little dot right there that's cameron uh louisiana um and here we go i'll show you what happens here that's in an hour now it's blowing uh 25 in an hour it's blowing pretty good right now. We've had some gusts in the 30s already. Let's zoom it out just a bit here. So you can get a better idea of what the whole Gulf of Mexico is doing, maybe. And then 12 a.m. Oops, it jumped all the way to Friday. Oh, it is Friday when it's 12 a.m. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Now, um, remember... This is us right there, where the little crosshairs are. Look at that. And look at this crazy front's moving in here. And it's got this little, I think that's called a trough in front of it. Go ahead, correct me on my uh, comments. I need comments. So uh, right here, it's blowing 38. You know, that's, and these are wind speeds, not gusts. But we still have 3 a.m. The front goes over us, 3 a.m. The wind clocks around. It's blowing 30 to 35 now from the west. So we're, it's gonna move us. But we're happy right now because this whole thing that was happening right here was happening right over us, it looked like, um, in the models before. Although this is the GFS let's see let's see what the other model says yeah well <laughs> yeah right about on top of us um, so anyway yeah th that's that's blowing pretty hard 4 a.m. still blowing 35 it's gonna be a boisterous night 5 a.m. Still blowing 34. 6 a.m. Holy moly. It's saying now that it's going to be blowing 40 knots at 6 a.m. from the west. We were hoping to be out of here at 6 a.m. when the west wind starts, but obviously we're not leaving here when it's blowing 40 knots from the west. So. 
7 a.m. 7 a.m. Still blowing. Look at this. 41 right there. 39. 37 right where we're at. At 7 a.m. tomorrow. That's really not good news for us. We were hoping to be out of here with this west wind. But we have to leave here on an outgoing tide again. Why? Why, Norman? Why do we have to leave when others could probably have left? Because we have electric motors. Did you hear that? Because we have an electric motor. That's right. This is part of it, guys. If you want an electric motor, you can't complain about that crap. Got a, got a, got a plan way ahead. And plan 9 a.m. 9 a.m. It's a sailboat. We're going to sail. Not a diesel boat. Not a diesel boat. No thinking. Well, Norman, how you feel about this uh, blow coming tonight? Well, we've secured everything the best we can, and uh, it, I'm a, I won't say I'm not a little nervous because I've never ridden anything out like this before on anchor. So, well, we're going to stand the watches tonight, and don't know if there'll be much sleep tonight, but we'll, I'll be, I think we'll be all right. So, we'll, we'll find out. Need a lot of work on this boat. We've done a lot of work. Don't want to see it. Well. <laughs> If it, if it would break loose, we'd just slide over there on the mud and sit and wait for the tide to go up a little bit. And, or yeah, Coast Guard or Boat well, US or supposed somebody. Supposed to be blowing, <laughs> blowing from the south, so. Yeah. And you have you have boat, towboat US too, right? I got somebody, yeah. I yeah and I got towboat US, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. All righty. It's blowing uh, probably 30 right now. We're going to check here in a minute. Uh, it's definitely gusting to 30. And it's supposed to pick up tonight, gusting into the 40s. And we're in this little anchorage down here in Louisiana. And uh, so basically, I uh, I just decided we ought to probably set this boat up like we're in a like we're anchored out for a hurricane type of situation, even though it's not quite that bad. Uh, it is going to be a it's going to be a blow. So we've got all the chain out. He's got 130 feet of chain out, I think, 125 feet of chain out. And uh, we put out another uh, 30 feet of road. So, so we should be good for that. Uh, it's, he's got a really good rock na anchor that's one size up for this boat, uh, which is more than adequate. Um, and then we went around and we tied everything off. We tried to reduce windage as much as we could on this little boat, uh, to, just so she doesn't uh, doesn't try to sail around on that road. Sometimes when you have road out instead of chain, they, the boat sails around on the road a little bit. Uh, the anchor's well set. We've been here for uh, three days now. So it's well set in the mud. The problem will be pulling it up probably tomorrow to sail out of here. Uh, but we'll we'll film that when that time comes as well. So I'll show you what we've done. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me out there because I'm using the GoPro. But if if you can't hear me, I'll uh, well you'll know right now. I I might be just uh, I might be just voiceovering this whole thing now that I'm going up there. But I'll try and holler at you talk to you oh the wind just kind of died down just now so here we go you can see, you can see her sailing on the road here it's already I think. 
loading is all you really need to do. Just kind of keep it from billowing up like that. Maybe crossing on both sides or something. cabin is full of stuff because we've been throwing all the fenders and stuff off the deck into there so there we go this boat should be fine shouldn't have any issues <sighs> that was an experience wasn't it that was an experience <laughs> so we made new friends <laughs> so I'll tell you what you know at this point after what just happened with us uh it makes me just like i do not understand how like delos how in the world they have that gopro ready to go when the shit hits the fan right yeah, exactly like That's how right. do you how do you keep a gopro going when you're trying to basically handle a almost emergency situation and i would i guess i would not call this an emergency situation it was just a high stress concerning situation that's, that's good yeah analogy. we weren't in danger but or the boat wasn't in danger yet, yet. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is when we we anchored before uh and then the wind blew and it blew hard for the last 24 hours or more yeah. Yeah. uh it must have drug it a little bit and two things happened so then when the wind clocked around to the west which we knew it was going to do the tide was also at that point coming in which pushed the boat to a different spot than it would be if it was just uh laying to the wind so it was laying to wind and current and it was a little different and so that pushed us uh toward the beach where there are these big pilings um that maybe you can see in some of the other video and all and so we had one piling that was probably 25 feet away oh yeah yeah, yeah. so it was it was too close it i mean it was and i think i think the anchor at that point was set and it was probably okay except uh we knew that and it doesn't sound like it right now there's like no wind <laughs> right now which is bizarre it's supposed to in two hours it's supposed to blow almost 40 from the west and that would have been yeah, that would have been the scary part. That would have put us around the pilings. Yeah, we would have been docked against the pilings. You know, not docked. It would have been beating the, all his nice stuff off the back of his boat. So, uh, so then uh, the other the other error was my error in uh, in that for some reason in my brain the turning room was almost backwards. So we needed to have our anchor on the other side of the of the bay from where it was and that was completely my fault i i'm the guy with the experience and should have known where to put that anchor for the blow that was coming and i think we anchor when we anchored we anchored for a uh, south blow and then it was clocking to the west and i thought we had plenty of room in the middle of that we were basically anchored in the middle of the anchorage and i thought we had plenty of room but we really needed to put it on the other side so uh so then our problem was now if you had again if you had a diesel engine and lots of fuel you'd go oh it's not a big deal you just fire up the engine motor forward uh and then you know reset and our concern was especially this being our first outing with this electric motor and the whole battery situation that we would have enough power to do that and um he has an electric 48 volt windlass and with the windlass and the motor we had no problem pulling up the anchor and resetting it uh but we were concerned i was concerned that we might run out of power and and we didn't 
And I do want to mention that everybody that just now says, oh yeah, see another reason why not to have an electric motor. I've also been anchoring with the diesel engine and had the fuel filters clog right in the middle of it. And you can't, you're trying to pull that anchor up in a situation that's just exactly like this and you have no motor because, and that's happened to me multiple times actually. So, so you can't use that as a reason not to get an electric motor. Uh, a diesel engine fails because of clogged filters very often and there are mitigating things you can do for that but there are with this as well so and we didn't end in the end we didn't have any problem with it no because I, I think the electric helps because it, i mean you can just go full and you're bam you're already going yeah to that was a surprising thing yeah, wasn't it yeah, yeah. I mean, it was that's instant, a good point it, i mean it is i mean we didn't have trouble oh. going against the wind at the time or nothing and there. i asked him i said i said I said, just go ahead, give her full bore, and thinking like I, it was a diesel, right. and and when you go full bore with that electric motor, I mean, it is moving. <laughs> it, it, it just it, went instant. So, yeah. So, yeah, we had no trouble powering no, that was, against that was, the wind. It's good to know that. It is, especially you know in that wind and, and in this this situation. So that goes that chalks it up to uh, more experience with the electric motor and also more faith in it and trust yeah. oh, in it. Yeah. So we've got a lull in the wind right now, and then it's gonna it's supposed to pick up to uh, about 40 knots uh, from the west. So that's our update for this evening. Thank you for coming along. Blowing this morning. How's it's, it going out here? It's good. I've been up for an hour or so, just watching everything. It was dark, a little bit dark when I got out here. I can see where we are. It's funny because we're facing due north according to the compass and then the anchor is west. <laughs> That's where we were. This That's morning. where we were over, over there. That, we were over there by that trailer house over there. Those pilings over there. Please come back next week as we continue down the coast of Louisiana on Ebby May. We end up in Port La Forche for another storm yet again. Run.